I thought to myself recently, now that I've got a fair bit of firearms, I don't have nearly as many as I'd like to have, but if I had to start over, if I had nothing, what would I start with first? And if I was gonna like build out a rifle, would I purpose build it or make kind of like a general purpose rifle to start building up the, the arsenal again? Probably a general per, well, I'll let Micah take the rifle, I'll take the pistol portion. Well, for each of I think you we individually, probably agree. I, I think, think we, so. I think we agree. I would just say buy a Glock 17 and get a dot. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That'd done. be your, your first done done deal. I mean, done. realistically, for a self defense sort of situation, your pistol is going to be your go to oh, yeah. concealable. Yeah. I think a pistol is probably as is, is probably a better first purchase than a rifle. Absolutely, I'd get I'd get uh, I'd start with a with a light because you can still start shoot with, light. With, yeah. with irons. But yeah, a G17, and that way it's kind of a it's a decent range gun. You know, I'm not a big fan of G19s, but that's because I have a crooked pinky after breaking it one year. Um, but G17, unless you're a tiny dude like Vietnamese or something like that, but G17, get a light, get get a dot, and then for rifle. Rifle, there's two options. Mm -hmm. There's two options, in my opinion. Um, honestly, get a PSA. <laughs> yeah. Like, like just get a PSA. They're super cheap, uh, and uh, they uh, lifetime warranty. That's cool. So, uh, you know, if you have your handgun already, but you want to come out to the range and do some tactical stuff, you at least know that, like, if it does break, you don't have to go buy parts for a new one. Um, and you can come out and plink a bunch of 5.56 five, rounds and not really worry about it. Option number two, get a rifle you want to keep and use in a serious capacity. Start at the level of, like, BCM and move up from there. So something a little bit more 16 inch. That's expensive. my that's my it's my opinion. People can argue all they want, but I've kind of moved away from anything under 145. Now is that, that because said, you do most of your shooting in Idaho? Yes. Okay. Because in a lot of places I was going to say that being said, uh, there's people that have hit me with massive quantifiable data sheets basically claiming 125 is the most ideal, you know, the least amount of sacrifices and I get that, but for me personally, I just uh, I, I I never intended on shooting past 100, uh, but when it became available, I was sad at the performance of my 10.5, or of my, uh, mm. yeah, of my 10.5. So, and, and now I just, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm going to the range, I'll probably just bring my 16. So. I mean, generally speaking, there's not a lot of ranges that offer more than 100 yards. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and it is kind of a luxury. Most people don't shoot on Grand Ram Ranch. Right. So, like... I would love to have a reason or a place that I can shoot within an hour and 45 minutes beyond a hundred yards, but it just doesn't exist like It that doesn't, me. yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's kind of unfortunate, man. I think that, that if you were buying a rifle for when SHTF, um, then you'd probably want a 16. Yeah, people get, they get caught in the weeds a lot too. I mean, look, Dudes early on, like Jua dudes, were running twenty-inch rifles, clearing buildings, and stuff With the like that. Like fixed right. A two yeah. stock. Yeah, or honestly, it doesn't matter. You can, you matter. Put, you have in, a gun you can put it in work for sure. Yeah. But I guess nowadays there are there's so many options out there. But yeah, like a 14.5, 16 inch. I know I've been shooting my fourteen five URGI a, a ton, which I don't know. Maybe it's from shooting shorties for so long that it's just I just want to shoot something. I don't different. even know why I suggested barrel length. Barrel length is the stupidest debate. How come? Mm, uh, because just shoot your gun. At the end of the day, you have a gun that shoots, and yeah. and, and if you know your holds, I mean, yeah, sure, your bolt's traveling a little, a little, a little slower. You're still gonna hit it. So I don't know. Just buy whatever your heart desires. That's my opinion. What about you, Charlie? Are you going with the cheaper route? Are you gonna get the PSA if you had nothing, or are you gonna like try and save up and get something like high quality? <laughs> no, I think. It was Going back to when I bought my first rifle, um, it wasn't the greatest. It wasn't the worst. Like I, you know, if I was going to spend seven, eight hundred bucks, uh, PSA was out there, which I eventually I got some PSAs down the road. But I went with like a Wyndham weaponry. You know, it was, it was chrome line, so I knew it, it'd last a little bit longer, um, and it it just ran. So I would just stay away from obvious like shit tier companies that um, just do your research. There's sure. going to be plenty of information out there on Reddit or something like that. I'm sure someone has created one of those tier lists. You know what I'm talking about? It's like S A. Oh, they, yeah. Guaranteed there's a, a, a tier list for rifle manufacturers and it's probably pretty accurate. There, there are so. some that are super accurate, some that aren't accurate. I mean, you can go with like the general, right? I, I think all the PSAs that I have, they've 
they've all run, right? I think the worst case was I, I got a, a free float 16 inch where the, the gas block was a little misaligned. But that's something I could take care of with a YouTube video. So I would probably, yeah, you can, starting out, I'd probably, depending on budget, um, even, even if I had the budget to go something crazy and le like, let's say the CIA couldn't hook me up with the Daniel Defense, right? Sure. And <laughs> instead of, instead of, <laughs> instead of, instead of paying, um, those those type of prices i'd probably yeah i'd kind of go a little bit cheaper with the expectation that that two is one and one is none and i would get another rifle maybe step it up a grade right at least the upper the the kind of guts of the rifle because lower is lower is a lower there are really nice lowers but usually a lower will do the job unless it's like polymer dog shit that'll break right. in certain places or something like that so i wouldn't be hesitant to go cheaper but not cheap if also know your end sure. goal know yeah. your end goal if you do know you want a, a, a duty rifle and you, you you're just going to be wasting money on your first rifle you have to know wh what you're where you're going to be i guess you don't always know the answer you could get your training rifle <laughs> and then think wow this is super sick and then but i would say like really look at it and if if money is that tight just that tight, or if you're that bad with it to where you can't save it, which is probably m more of the case, um, then <sighs> figure out your end goal. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I didn't even consider when I first started. Like, what is the purpose of the rifle? Yeah. I never even considered it. I just wanted a rifle. I right. knew I needed a rifle. 16 inch is what I got because that was what was available and at a, you know, at a good price. Um, but I never even really considered about a specific use Case, that early right. on. Um, and I, anytime I started like analyzing some of the details, I sort of got a little paralyzed with it because there's so many options yeah, and yeah. everybody's got an opinion about the barrel length <laughs> or the optic or the upper and lower or what kind of bolt carrier group coating you need right, right. for it to be the best. Um, and it starts to get to be too much to where you almost don't do anything right. and you waste this time that would have been otherwise spent uh, improving on the rifle because 90% of the controls are going to be the same unless you get like an ambi lower or something like that. But you can train the same way with dry fire and everything else on a cheap rifle than you could on an expensive one. For sure. So, And that's why I said that, that those PSAs, if you do want to get out here and train, it's probably the quickest entry into yeah. a, a decent rifle for, for training. I think yeah. I still have I, like like four or five PSAs that I just won't get rid of because I know they run. They're they're obviously not to, uh, you know, the ex more expensive end, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this will this will last through anything. It's bomb proof. But they run. They'll do the job if I need it. If I, you know, if the, the end of the world and Costco gets rid of their dollar fifty hot dogs, I can give it to a homie. You know what I mean? Sure. And so. I keep saying PSA, and I think I'm using PSA as kind of a buzzword for a rifle around that price. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. necessarily mean PSA is the only company. There are definitely companies course, that are a little right. bit more expensive that uh, they make some great things, and then other things uh, are dog shit where the bolts break, and I've seen them break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll, we'll mention the company. Fuck them. 